there's an enemy that haunts every coder. You may not even know that it's there, but this enemy is no joke. I fought this thing for years, and I've seen it destroy people's careers with my own eyes. The enemy is, of course, <laughs> yourself. Hello, right back at you. Fight. That's right, oftentimes you are your own worst enemy. Without even realizing it, you could be sabotaging your entire coding career. But why would you do such a thing to yourself? I'll show you why and what the top three pitfalls to avoid are. So let's get into it. So why do coders self-sabotage? Well, for me, it began with my first web developer job. I was a self-taught coder with only a few years under my belt. I knew some basic SQL, HTML, CSS, and had worked on websites in the past, but I wasn't prepared to build full landing pages for clients. On the other hand, my boss and coworkers had five to 10 years of experience over me, and they had even gotten master's degrees in computer science. They breezed through all their work without a problem, whereas I struggled so much, I felt like a complete fraud. I was insecure about my coding abilities and had zero confidence in myself. When I was put in situations where I would need to build something that I was unfamiliar with, I felt very inadequate. So all these feelings morphed into the ugly Negatron self-saboteur that we all battle with. This saboteur says nothing you do is good enough, that a competent coder wouldn't have to ask questions, that because the senior developers are so much faster, their code's so much more efficient than yours, you should just quit. It tells you that you are so far from where you should be that everyone will eventually find out that you actually don't deserve to be there and you'll lose your job. Having this expectation that you need to be perfect with little to no experience can cause a lot of unneeded stress and anxiety. Of course a developer who's been in the industry for five to 10 years will be way better than a first year developer, but that logical voice is drowned out by the saboteur. Now that stress is bad, but what's worse is that these insecurities can spawn some really bad habits. The first of which we'll talk about is how it makes you want to hide your mistakes. Have you ever realized that you made a mistake at work that was kind of major and then felt that horrible sinking feeling in your stomach? Admitting when you're wrong is a blow to your ego and no one likes feeling like that, especially at work. So if you do make a mistake that is public or somehow got into production, the absolute worst thing you can do is to hide it. Honestly, if it is a big public goof up, someone is going to notice eventually, so it's better to get out ahead of it. You really should tell your boss or the project manager right away. Telling them immediately will enable them to come up with a game plan to fix the problem and also inform the client or whomever needs to know about it. Everyone makes mistakes. It's only human. But how you respond when you make mistakes is what can help or hurt your reputation at your job. If people know that you're the type of person who will admit when they're wrong so that the problem can be fixed quickly, they will respect your transparency. On the other hand, if you sit on a big error without telling anyone and it ends up costing your company a lot of money, you may not come out of it looking so great. So even though it may suck in the short term to admit that you've messed up, it is way better for everyone to be open and honest about it. Getting stuck on a coding problem and wanting to bash your head against the keyboard is a pretty normal part of being a web developer. If you're lucky enough to have coworkers or a boss that you can ask for help, the question is, when should you ask for help? You don't want to ask right away before trying to figure out the solution yourself because that can become kind of annoying for your coworkers. And part of being a web developer is learning the arcane art of Googling, or in my case, DuckDuckGoing. But at some point, if you're really, truly stuck, you do need to ask someone. And this can be hard to do. I know that I often would sit at my desk for hours sometimes, going through search results and Stack Overflow posts and trying all kinds of different fixes. But if nothing worked, I would have to swallow my pride and talk to one of my coworkers. I knew that if I waited too long before asking for help, it could make me look inefficient in my work and even worse, potentially jeopardize a project deadline. Now, there's no secret formula for how long you should try things on your own before asking for help, but do your best to balance how long you spend on problem solving with any deadlines that you may have. And if you do ask for help and end up getting an answer from someone else, try to understand why the solution works. 
If you can identify the principle behind the initial issue, then you'll be better prepared to deal with it the next time it pops up. Because you will have to deal with it again, I promise you. Self-sabotage number three, being defensive and close-minded about your work. This is one of the most damaging ways that you can hurt your own career. I saw people lose their jobs because they were overly defensive. And I would be lying if I said it never affected me either. One time I was working with another developer on a project and we were supposed to build a Google map with some custom map pins. Now, neither of us had had experience doing this. I remember after the kickoff meeting, the other developer started kind of ranting, saying how could they expect us to build something that neither of us had done before? I was a little surprised to hear that because every project was a new challenge that I had to figure out. We needed to build that map one way or the other, and flat out refusing to do the work would only cause frustration for everyone on the team. I ended up building the JavaScript functionality that the other developer didn't want to touch. I had to look up how to do it, but I got it done. Unfortunately, the other developer didn't last very long at the company. No one wanted to work with them because they had this very closed mindset, and honestly, they weren't great to work with. On the other hand, even though I didn't have a ton of experience, I was open to tackling things even if they were out of my comfort zone. I got to work on a lot of cool websites because the project managers saw me as a team player. What I realized over time is that ultimately your inexperience isn't as big a problem as you might imagine it is. Everyone just wants to get the work done as quickly as possible. And no one actually cared if I didn't know everything off the top of my head. And it was fine if I needed a little time to research and test things out. I learned that it's okay to say, I don't know how to do this, but I can try to figure it out and update you in a couple of hours. The worst thing you can do in a work project is to block progress of the work and not help find a solution. Instead of focusing on how others perceive you, remember the bigger picture and focus more on how you can help your team get the work to the finish line. Whether that means taking time to research an unfamiliar skill or even reaching out to coworkers or supervisors for help, it's most important that you are a good team player. All right, so we've covered three ways that you might be self-sabotaging your own developer career hiding your mistakes, not asking for help when you should, and being defensive about your work. Now, obviously, overcoming insecurity is a big issue, and if you struggle with it like I do, it's going to be something that you might spend your whole career and even life learning to work with. Just remember that over time, you'll get a lot better at things. Of course, you'll be slow and shaky with your work, but just remember that even the senior developers around you have been there before. So don't kick yourself for every little thing that you don't know. Every piece of knowledge that you don't know today is something that you can work on to learn and add to your skill set. And ultimately, the more skills you acquire, the more confident you will become over time. So I hope this video can help you in the fight with your own saboteur. Let me know if this has been helpful for you, and if I've missed anything, let me know down in the comments. If you like this video, you might like my other videos on how to stay motivated when learning to code and how to debug your code faster. And as always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.